So we'd like to make a polymer stronger. We'd like to strengthen uh, that polymer. And at this point, the the only model that we have for a polymer is this, uh, you know, sort of um, the string model, if you will, which is actually not too bad. I mean, in fact, we can discuss some strengthening just with that, and we will. But in order to get a little bit better than that, we need to and, and explain some other strengthening mechanisms. We need to distill our model a little bit. We need to get a little bit of a better model. And as I have mentioned, and you may be aware, this um, polymer that I'm depicting just as this string is actually made up of these individual atoms that are bonded together by some strong bonds. And they've got different uh, atoms bonded off, uh, off the side of them. And so what we need to do to, to understand the model of a polymer at this level, understand what a polymer is at that level, and break down the name here, poly meaning numerous, and mer referring to the uh, repeating unit. So actually we start to see a similarity between, um, between the way we, we study um, a metal uh, or a ceramic, and we look at a unit cell, right? And a polymer now we have we have a a unit that repeats, but it's uh, traditional or typically it's not as convenient to refer to individual atom positions the way we do for metals or ceramics. Um, you can to a certain extent with some highly organized polymers when they, when they crystallize, but a more uh, a, a better way to do it is as we've shown here these little strings, but we need to show the repeating chemistry within those strings, and that is based on, on this mer unit. So the 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 mer unit or the repeating unit is actually based on the the chemistry, the chemicals used to create the polymer or synthesize the polymer, create the polymer. So what we can do, let's look at uh, to help you know, solidify this concept. Let's look at an example of a very quite a straightforward but actually very relevant and useful polymer and that would be polyethylene. So polyethylene ethylene. Um, and, you know we often just write it PE. And so what what is it? Well polyethylene you can tell from the name eth means it's got two carbons. It should have two carbons in the unit. Poly means it's numerous. These things are extremely long. So the, the, the basic repeating unit should have two carbons. And that repeats a great number of times out and on each side. I mean, we're talking thousands, tens of thousands of times that it repeats. And off to the side, I bonded onto each carbon. There's four of these strong bonds off each carbon. Then uh, we've got uh, we've got a hydrogen off uh, two hydrogens off each carbon, and we, we write a little lowercase n there just to mean that that is repeating. It refers to the um, the number of times that it repeats. So when we had with metals, we had this unit cell. You may remember that the unit cell was the smallest convenient. Um, building block. So with polymers as well, you'll see here, if you know a little bit of polymer naming, you may wonder why don't we call this polymeth, you know, polymethane or something, because it looks like the smallest unit should be carbon with two hydrogens. And the reason that it's named polyeth, uh, polyethylene, is because we actually start with this molecule here, carbon, double bond carbon with its hydrogens bonded off to it, on it, and we break that double bond and then that allows another mer unit to add on to the end of it um, and that process of breaking the double bond and repeating and elongating the molecule or, or lengthening the molecule continues. So because there's two carbons in the starting chemistry, 
right? That's what was used to create the polymer. We name it F. Now, you may also wonder why it's called polyethylene instead of um, polyethene. And that's a, that's a good question. So this is, this molecule here is technically ethene, double bond, so it's in F, referring to two carbons. And so in fact, in some places, this is, the, the polymer made from ethene is, is called polyethene. In, uh, I think in, in Great Britain, they, they pronounce it polythene. Um, the common, the most common name is, in North America at least, is ethylene, and it's a bit of a, uh, you know, it's not technically the, the correct name for that molecule, but it's just so common that uh, it sticks, and so we refer to the polymer as polyethylene. And that, uh, you know, I spent a bit of time on that because you'll find similar sorts of conventions that to stick around from history um, for naming of polymers, polypropylene, for example, it's not called poly one methylethylene or polypropylene. Actually, has a repeating chemistry that uh, looks like this. Okay, so we've got the hydrogen, and we replace one of those hydrogens with a methyl group. And so, because there's three carbons, we call it prop. Prop referring to the number of carbons. Number of carbons. Um, and pr the prefix, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, and so on. F, uh, uh, sorry, correction, meth for the first. Okay, so there we go, let's fix that. Meth, F, um, prop, but, pent. Okay, so the, these, these are um, prefixes you see in chemistry referring to the number of carbons. Um, a student told me once, monkeys eat peeled bananas. Please hand him one. And that gets you all the way up to oct for eight. But um, anyway, that's where this name comes from. And, and what I wanted to show you here is if you are familiar with some formal name, naming conventions, you may want to call this poly-1-methylethylene or poly-1-methylethene. But the, the common name is polypropylene. So you will encounter these common names for these polymers that we used. Um, based on common names of the uh, mer chemistry that repeats. So um, that's uh, something that will happen. Try not to get too frustrated by that. <clears throat> but there we go. We've got the, the sense here now that the, the mer unit is the repeating chemistry that uh, is used to create the polymer. And that's what we're going to deal with, with with polymers. And what we can look at later are some different implications of changing the mer chemistry uh, and what that can do to the properties.